I'm not going to need plenty of time. All right. <laughs> so welcome to our team call for February 10th. I am super excited to have Savannah come chat with us tonight. Savannah, um, if you don't follow her, you absolutely should. She is phenomenal. She is literally the most consistent person ever on social media. Um, and she's not only just rocking her personal journey and come so far, like her transformation just makes my jaw drop every time I see it. Um, but she's really seeing phenomenal success in her business already as a new coach. And I know we have a lot of new coaches on the team that are just trying to figure things out and learn the ropes and know what to do. And it can be kind of overwhelming sometimes. So I wanted her to come on tonight um, and just share her tips with you from a new coach that is having success, that is having success, um, hitting success club. She earned her success starters ticket to come to summit. Let's pray that it happens. <laughs> um, and she also is our newest diamond coach. So Savannah, I will let you take it away. And I'm hoping if you're going to screen share, then I probably need to put the setting on to allow you to do that. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Um, okay, see if, see if you can, you should be able to, okay, try now. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. And I'm going to mute myself. The green button, Savannah, below that says screen share. Yep. Oh, and I also have to tell you guys this that I very vividly remember having a conversation with Savannah before she signed up to coach. Um, that fear was the biggest like hold up for her. Um, and I was kind of like, well, <laughs> like we can sit there and like be fearful, or you can kind of dive in and say, screw it. And that's exactly what she's done. So it's even more phenomenal to see the success she's had knowing that that was kind of, you know, something that almost stopped her from coaching. So that should be a lesson for all of us to step into the things that make you uncomfortable. Um, and every single challenge that I've given her <laughs> along the way with coaching, I'm like, go talk in your stories, go do this, go do that. And she, she does it and she rocks it. So leaning into that discomfort is where the change happens. And I know that speaking on this team call tonight is definitely out of her comfort zone too. So can everybody give her a, <laughs> a cheers? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about fear too. Let's see what we got. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Anyone? Okay, I need to start. Okay, so I am Savannah. I started with this journey back in April um, and I started as a regular old co uh, discount coach and I saw some serious success very quickly, um, but I continuously said no to coaching. Um, and I think that that is the perfect segue to my first slide, which is um, beliefs are everything. So I thought that after saying no over and over and over again, I finally changed my mind in June, end of June, early July um, to Dana. And I said, yes, okay, I'll give coaching a shot. Oh, um, this would be my second time coaching. And again, I kind of, went back to that fear. I don't want to fail again. I already tried this once. Um, I had all of these like really self-limiting beliefs. Um, and so I think I had this, con this idea in my head that because I agreed to say yes to coaching, that that automatically meant that I believed in myself enough to do it. Not necessarily the case. <laughs> um, so I said yes, and I drafted my, what we call our coming out post. Um, and I quickly realized that you cannot believe in anybody else until you believe in yourself. Now, if you do not believe in yourself, I encourage you to lie to yourself for a little bit, wake up every single day and tell yourself, you can be successful, you can do this, you can meet the goals that you set for yourself. Um, if you say it enough, I promise you will eventually believe it. And that is exactly what I had to do. 
took me a couple days of having my coming out postructed <laughs> um, before I finally said, okay, you know what? I told Dana I was gonna do this. I made a commitment to myself, to her, to my team, um, and I hit post. And I think seeing all of the support and encouragement um, on that post, when I tell you, I literally had more likes on that post than I did um, my wedding pictures when both of my children were born. <laughs> Savannah, you sound like you're muted now for some reason. I don't know what's happening. Savannah, can you hear me? I need you too, Mom. Um, I agree. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I went back and forth. To the no, I was just saying I, I agree with all the sentiments there. Oh, thank you. trying to figure out my goals. So basically I had all of these goals. Um, I knew what my why was, but there was no real specific goal attached to my why. And within the first couple of months, I realized I needed to believe in something more than just wanting to be a morning person. I needed to believe in something more than wanting to get fit. If I was gonna be successful in this business, then I needed to believe it. Um, so my why, if you don't know, if you don't follow me, is um, my family, and the goal attached to that is that I ultimately would like to be able to quit my job as an infant teacher um, and be home full time so that I can pick my boys up from school once they get to be school aged, um, et cetera, et cetera. And those are the things that I'm really working towards. Um, so the, the game changer for me in my belief system was when I hit Emerald, my coach Dana reached out to me and she said, um, tell me something that you want to work on because this is where the personal development comes in. I ultimately decided after her giving me a few examples of things that I could work on, um, that storytelling was the thing that I wanted to work on. I could time manage and I could um, set boundaries for myself. I believe that I could do that. Um, but what I needed to work on was m my way of inspiring people. And I knew that that was gonna be through my post. Um, so I told, she sent me as a gift for when I hit Emerald, this book, Stories That Stick by Kent Kinder Hall. And if you are not familiar, you definitely need to read this one. Prior to reading this book, I was not a believer in personal development. I thought it was a crock, as most people do, I think, when they first start. Um, but there was a quote in this book and it says, stories constitute the single most powerful weapon in a leader's arsenal. And after I read this book, the month that I started reading this book, I hit Success Club 10 for the first time. And I hit Success Club 10 the month after. Um, and to this day, I would say the strongest part of my business journey is my daily posts. Um, being able to tell my story effectively in a post that is um, not super long, um, but long enough to get my point across, um, and long enough to inspire people and have them relate to me, makes people come to me, um, granted, I'm not saying you don't have to invite and do the work, you still have to be Savannah, you're muted again for some reason. I don't know what is happening. Is that, is that, can anybody else hear that? 
Like she's going in and out. Or that's just me. No, I can't hear her either. She's in and out. Oh no. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's super weird. Like you're talking and we can hear you and then it just like goes silent and then it comes back. <laughs> oh, no. I think we All need right. to exchange our computer. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, just interrupt me again if if it continues. All right, so let's see. Most important part to me, authenticity. Um, I was on a call in the beginning of my journey, um, and I can't remember who it was, um, but somebody had said, I think it was a Slay Squad, squad call, and if you're not going on the Slay Squad call, you should be. Um, Lots of people are going to have tips and tricks and be on calls. You're going to be on a lot of calls just like this one um, where people are sharing what works for them, um, tricks that have helped them be successful, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what you're going to learn is that you have to follow your own path. You're going to need to take the time and understand that it might take time. Um, to find your true authentic self and what works for you. Um, and going back to the authenticity, you have to be honest. <laughs> Don't try to be what other people, what you think other people want you to be or what you're supposed to be because you're a beach body coach. Um, and definitely do not say what you think people want to hear just to make a sale. Um, People can tell when you're just trying to make a sale versus when you are being genuine. Um, I myself, when I when what I consider my salesy phase, <laughs> um, because I thought that's what people wanted to hear. I thought they wanted to hear that I knew that Shakeology had adaptogens and prebiotics and probiotics. Um, so I would spew all that information and don't get me wrong, I still hit success club those months, um, but I am a much more authentic coach now than I was then because now I'm just sharing the things that are meaningful to me, which is not that Chickology has adaptogens or chicka or root or whatever <laughs> other ingredients it has, it's that it fills me up, it curbs my cravings, it fills in the gaps in my diet that um, would otherwise be lacking. And that's just one example. Um, this journey is not about making sales for me. Um, ultimately, it is about reconnecting with people from my past, uh, connecting with people um, who are new to me, which is kind of like just starting. Um, I'm just now building up my social media um, and having people reach out to me and making connections with people who are new. We call it your cold market um, versus your warm market, which is your the people who um, you were friends with before, who you know personally, your friends, your family, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I, I think I... I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. I think I went through my salesy phase because I struggled and I think this is something a lot of new coaches might struggle with. Um, with I struggled with feeling reputable because Beachbody doesn't require you to take a class um, to teach about nutrition or to teach about fitness. Um, but I think what most people care about is that you're speaking about your experience and that is what's going to create your most authentic self. Yeah. All right, number three. I am a full-time working mother. I have two wild and crazy children. I am a wife. Um, my days are busy, and in order to be successful in this business, I have to keep it simple. That being said, I thought the success tracker that Beachbody uses was optional, and it is not. <laughs> um, that being said, you don't necessarily need to use the Beachbody 
success tracker, I don't think, as long as you have a system that works for you. Um, and that system might change. For example, I found this in a journal, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but way back in the beginning, this is dated July 21st. I wanted to find a way to merge my success tracker and my to do mindset journal because I was and still am a firm believer that um, in order to be successful in a business, my health journey has to be successful as well. And tracking because I follow to do mindset is an important part of that. Um, you probably won't be able to see, but I tried to kind of merge them. So this has my meal stuff, my water, and then my business stuff. Time and dash check-in was happening at the time. Um, a quality post of the day, keep stories live, start five new conversations. Um, and this system has changed for me over time, just like yours will as well. Um, another important piece of keeping it simple is the power hour. You've probably seen a lot of posts. Um, Kelly and Maggie and Dana are all really great about the power hour and sharing with you guys. Um, for me personally, I can't speak to what anybody else does, but for me personally, a power hour is important, but I need to break it down further than an hour. Um, if somebody says, hey, you have an hour to do all of these things, I'm going to go somewhere else because that's not how my brain works. I break it down in 15 minute increments. So I spend 15 minutes, I set a timer and I'm spending that 15 minutes making connections and these are new connections. They can be small connections, um, like starting a conversation by reaching out to somebody who to say happy birthday. That's something I do a lot. I start a lot of my conversations through reaching out via messenger saying happy birthday. Um, and you'd be surprised how successful that's been. <laughs> um, when that timer goes off, I'm moving on and I'm making spending 15 minutes um, inviting. I always encourage you to have something to invite to, be it your ongoing um, accountability group, be it a launch group like this nine you control freak thing we should be milking the crap out of if you follow Annalisa, which you should you know that she's been really great about um breaking down the um launch of nine you control freak to really make the most out of the group that's going on right now savannah you went mute again <laughs> Did she freeze for everybody? She's frozen. You should. Oops. What was that? You froze. <laughs> it must. I wonder if it's your internet. It might be. Okay, you're good now, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Following up is key, guys. Uh, never stop talking to somebody when they say no. That is bad business. It's bad business. It's ingenuine. It's inauthentic you accept their no and you move on with a new conversation about something else. Um, you can sprinkle in invites over the course of a couple of months, weeks, sometimes it takes years. Dana had multiple conversations with me before I finally said yes. <laughs> but because she remained authentic with me and had meaningful conversations with me about things other than Beachbody, that's the person that I went to when I was ready and it'll be the same thing for you. Um, and then finally, I'm spending 15 minutes at the end of my power hour um, doing things like researching hashtags, um, commenting on Savannah, I don't know if she can hear me. is yoga social media studies essentially um that as well as the fact that that's going to make the algorithms happy social media is like a whole world of tips and tricks um recently i've had a lot of success on instagram um 
it seems like in this business, people will kind of do better with one or the other. And so obviously when I was in my warm market, I had most of my success on Facebook. Um, and now that I um, am building my Instagram, I've had a lot of success there. Um, and that's why it's so important to work both. In the beginning, my Instagram was not a business page. If your Instagram is not a business page, you should transition that in the settings. Um, reach out to me or anybody else in your upline and we can help you through that if you need it. Um, because that's going to give you insights as to when your page is getting the most traction. I realized that in the first month I was posting at my least busy time of the day. <laughs> Um, and that's something I never would have known if I hadn't of uh, made that switch. Um, let's see, take advantage of your upline, guys. We are all invested in your success. Do not be afraid to ask questions. We have all been where you have been, and we all start at ground zero. None of us have a degree in social media marketing, so we've all had to learn the hard way, and that means good things for you because you can take advantage of what we learned the hard way. At the end of the day, use the products, get the results, create the relationships, and have success. Um, that's all for that, but I did just want to end with the fact that if I can do this from my bougie desk in my pajamas <laughs> after working multiple hours every single day, you also can do this. And I am happy to answer any of your questions. No, that was very good. Uh, and you inspire me with all of your reels, okay? I'm gonna call you the real queen, okay? <laughs> oh, that's something I didn't mention was batching. Guys, I make all of my reels on Sunday afternoon and I save them to my drafts so that I can post them. Um, and you just let one out a day pretty much, right? Yep, yeah. I, I yeah. go through my insights and I look at um, each day when my most heavy traffic time of that day is. Um, and that's when I post them. Usually the reels do better um, when I post at night, usually like between seven and eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just because my market is moms who are putting their kids to bed between seven and eight. So, yeah. yeah. Savannah, so, so is most of your business coming from Instagram then? Um, it is right now. In the beginning, it was a lot of Facebook, obviously, because that's where my warm market is. That's my, my friends and close family and et cetera, et cetera. Um, Obviously, it is not lost on me that the shout out from Alana has helped grow my Instagram. <laughs> um, but definitely lately, it's been a lot of um, random reach outs that have ended in great conversations with people um, and quite a few uh, sales as well. Awesome. Savannah, can you maybe walk through like when you, um, when someone does reach out to you or you reach out to them, like what are you saying to them just to kind of give an idea for everyone at the initial contact of what you do? Yeah. So um, honestly, I never reach out to somebody specifically about Beachbody unless like today, for example, um, somebody posted on one of my reels. I think it was either last night or this morning. Um, I need a program that helps me do that uh, from home. And so I just reached out to her and I was like, hey, thank you for the support on my page because she had liked a couple of other things. I followed her back, um, mostly so she could see my message. And uh, we started talking about what it is that I do and um, how I have I just talked about like my my own personal journey really i haven't mentioned the fact that i'm a coach though i'm sure she um has put two and two together um but i just said if i can do this from home anybody can do this from home i have um an app on my phone that has countless programs to choose from we have low impact options we have boxing options um just kind of explained the app to her um, and I haven't gotten a response yet, but that's one example. Um, but other than that, 
Um, it's really just like conversations about, uh, like I said, the happy birthday one that usually starts a lot of just random conversations. Um, those are mostly people who I'm friends with on Facebook and I go every day and I just shoot them a happy birthday message. And then when they say thanks back, I say, long time no talk, how's it been? Um, what about on Instagram? Because the birthday thing doesn't go there. Like, what do you do on Instagram to then start those connections if you if you are getting more business kind of there recently? Um, one tip that I took from a, a call I was on, again, right in the beginning, I want to say it was a Slay Squad call. Um, they had said to research hashtags of like a place that you like to go or a restaurant that you like to go. Um, and so one example, my husband and I um, frequent Burlington um, and there's a restaurant there called Country Cart Deli uh, and they have this really great breakfast sandwich. Um, and so I specifically reached out to one girl who had posted a picture of a breakfast sandwich from the Country Cart Deli and I said, oh my gosh, I, we love the Country Cart Deli. I don't get over there much, but have you ever tried the Rise and Shiner? And literally that was the start of the conversation. Um, so I think it's just like about finding some sort of common ground that can be completely random. Um, and sometimes it takes a lot of work and it takes a long time to get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm ready to invite this person to something. Um, but that's kind of what it's all about, right? Creating connections um, with people you wouldn't otherwise, so. I love all this and I love if you would kind of just break down like where you fit your 15 minute windows in because I know we have a lot of coaches that work and I feel like that is something that most people struggle with is the time, yeah. how to do the time block. So like if you could maybe give an example of how you do that, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. So um, especially in the beginning before I had a computer, <laughs> I just recently got this computer, by the way. So I, uh, my husband bought it for me for my birthday, which is in December. So I hit diamond before I even had a computer. So you can do this too. A computer does not stop you. Um, I tend to, I literally set a timer on my phone um, for 15 minutes. And I honestly, most of the time I'm laying in bed waiting for my boys to fall asleep. Um, they go to bed at seven. I shut the door. I have to yell at my younger son a couple of times. If you saw my story <laughs> last night, his copying me, um, telling him to go to bed. That's pretty much what I do. So I, I sit either here at my desk where I can see their bedroom door or I lay in my bed um, and I set my timer and I go through, I make my connections from my phone, I invite from my phone, um, I'm doing my follow-ups, and I'm definitely doing my hashtag research and stuff in that hour um, from usually from seven to eight in 15-minute blocks. Who has more questions? <laughs> I think what I love about this call is that it's simple, but the simple things are truly what build the success. Like we, we tend to di deep dive into all this fancy stuff. And sometimes that just overwhelms you and keeps you from taking the action that actually is what builds your business. So For sure. I love that you hit on all the most important things. And I will say that I started batching my reels as well. <laughs> Thanks to Savannah. <laughs> and it's so helpful because you just, you have it right there ready to post whenever you need it. And they definitely help a lot with growing your following. So you can even type in your, um, the text, like when I do it, I type my text for my caption. I add my hashtags to it so that I literally just have to click post um, yeah. it's ready to go. Cause I usually do it. Uh, like, like I said, between seven and eight, uh, that's usually how I start my, my power hour. Um, and then I just go right into it. So having it ready to go, I, I know for a fact that I would not be as successful with the reels if I was not batching them. So it's just too time consuming. Yeah. But worth it.
Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> so in terms of fear of like taking action to get over the fear, like what tips do you have for new coaches that might be like, I'm afraid to invite or I'm afraid to put myself out there. or I'm afraid to share transformation photos. Like what advice would you give them? Because I know that so many times you've been like, that's uncomfortable and that's scary. And then you're like, screw it. And you go do it anyways. And I think that's a really important quality to have in this business. So do you have tips for people on how to do that? Um, honestly, accountability is my number one thing. And yeah. a lot of it is also my personality, which obviously you can't change. And I wouldn't want you to change that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but I think I, you can develop it too. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I commit to do something, I commit to do it. And so when I said yes to Dana, I knew that that was something that I needed to do. So it took me a couple of days, but I clicked post on that coming out post. And then it was out there to the world that I was doing this. And I was like, okay, well, I can't go back now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, um, honestly, just doing it. I, I, I wish I had a better, <laughs> a better um, tip for that. But I think, the thing that you have clarity on is you have clarity on where you're going with this business. Exactly. And that's what drives you to do things that are uncomfortable. And that's why I, I mentioned um, in the beginning, it's one thing to have a why and it's another thing to have a why with a goal attached to it. Yeah. Um, because 100%. you can say you want to do this for whatever reason, but if you don't have a goal, maybe not necessarily an end goal, but a, by April, I want to do this because by July, I want to do this because, um, because just a why was not good enough for me. I needed a goal. I needed to be able to visualize it um, and lay out the things that I needed to do in order to meet that goal. And I like to do lists so I can cross those things off as I get closer to that goal. Yeah. That's so true. The goals get you to the end result. <laughs> um, what was my other question for you? Oh, strategizing your way to diamond. I feel like diamond can sometimes be like a scary thing, but if you're hitting success club, it's really not that, you know, it's an incredible accomplishment, but it's totally doable. And I think you've shown that. So would you share how you strategize your way to get to diamond? So one thing that still sometimes trips me up, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> um, is helping somebody to understand um, the, my, my rank is built pretty much on discount coaches, just yeah. to be completely clear. Um, I have one active Emerald, and then my other active Emerald is myself <laughs> under my husband's account. Yeah. Um, and so I think I am a little bit of a control freak, so it is easy for me to hold, know that I'm going to be able to hold that rank because yeah. it's me controlling it. And if I drop it, I have nobody to blame but myself for not doing the work. Um, so I know a lot of people will not necessarily go that route, um, because it puts a lot of pressure on yourself. Um, but I think at the same time as it puts pressure on yourself, it holds you accountable for those uncomfortable things that we were just talking about. Um, and it also allowed me to pour into my one active coach completely um, to make sure that her emerald, shout out to Amanda, was also strong. Um, so yeah, that was, that was kind of how I did it. Um, but also, like I was starting to say, inviting people to the discount coaching thing can be a little uncomfortable because then people are like, oh, I don't, I don't want to coach or, oh, why are you asking me for my social security number? Um, and so in the beginning, I tended to shy away from inviting people to that and just signing them up as customers. Um, but getting the hang of being like, okay, these are your options for signing up. I can sign you up as a customer and the, this would be your price monthly for Shakeology or this would be your price monthly for um, performance stack 
out there after the challenge pack purchase. Or I can sign you up as a discount coach. No obligation to actually coach unless you fall in love with it like I did and end up wanting to do it. Um, and this would save you 25% off not only your monthly order, but also all future launch accessories, et cetera, et cetera, in the future. Um, and getting a hold of inviting to the discount coaching aspect of it um, and getting comfortable with that invitation was what helped me um, build that diamond mostly. I'd yeah, say. that's a really good point because you can't you can't grow in rank if you're not signing people up as coaches or discount coaches. And discount coaches are basically just preferred customers. They're customers that get a discount. So it's definitely a big point. Most people always, most people have BJ's or Costco and all those things too. So you yep. can just kind of like talk it up to, it's kind of similar to like the BJ's wholesale membership. You know, once you get it, you get, you know, reduced rate on everything moving forward, but you can still stop at any time. Like, don't worry. But, you know, I know I like saving a buck. I'm not sure about you, you know? And often they're like, yeah, please. Like, I want to do that. Some won't, but um, definitely let them know that because your rank won't change. And if you're sitting there with a bunch of, uh, customers you're never hitting emerald and that's when you start cycle bonusing and that's where you start the you're, you're building your volume and your retention of just money and income coming in and that's where you're going to see a lot of your income come in as you keep building so you really need to have some of those coaches whether they're discount and some active coaches of course <laughs> that's very nice <laughs> Yeah, and just a side note on volume, because I've been talking to quite a few of, of you about this, but it, if you don't yet necessarily understand volume, there's trainings in the Action Takers, a couple of videos that will help you understand volume, because I think understanding how we grow income is really important when we run this business, and it was something that I didn't really understand for a very long time. Um, but when you're an Emerald coach, you make $14 a cycle. And when you're a diamond, you make 18. And that might not seem like that big of a deal, but when you're cycling multiple times a week over the course of a month, it makes a big, a very big difference in your income. So essentially, um, getting to diamond and having a solid diamond that you hold is going to grow you a lot more income in the long run than, than being an emerald coach. So pushing to that level is going to help you a lot in terms of being at the place of highest potential to grow income, because then anything you build from diamond and beyond, you're making more on a cycle for doing the same exact amount of work that you do as an emerald coach, if that makes sense. Um, there was one other question I had for you. Oh, this is the thing is how are you learning to share the coaching opportunity as a new coach? Cause I know this is something we've talked about and I think you've done a really good job, like breadcrumbing little things. And I hear you talk about coaching your stories sometimes too. So if you have any tips, yeah. because I feel like sometimes we're kind of like, well, I haven't had success yet or I don't make a lot of money yet or I haven't hit certain ranks yet. So I can't really talk about coaching cause I'm not that successful. But if we don't talk about it, we don't, become successful. So it's kind of a catch 22. <laughs> I have recently made it a point to talk about coaching in my stories like two to three times a week, um, bare minimum. And then at least one post that has something to do with coaching. Um, and again, I don't really talk too, too much about it. Um, like forwardly, yeah, because I want people to ask, come to me and start a conversation with me and ask me questions. Um, so like Dana just mentioned, um, breadcrumbing it. I specifically remember a post that I made in like December and it the was the pajamas, like, right? All in pajamas, yep. <laughs> yeah. I remember. <laughs> it was my family all in matching Christmas pajamas, which is something that we could never have afforded before. And it's something small. I mean, in the in the beginning and still now, my my beach body paychecks are are not something like extraordinary because I'm still so um but that was my first big paycheck and I wanted um, to do something special with it. And I bought my family all matching Christmas pajamas because it was something that I really wanted. Um, and I made a post about it. And that post got like a ridiculous amount of likes because one, I got cute kids. <laughs> and two, I, it was just, it's like um, relatable, you know? Not, not everybody can afford something like that. 
Um, and then talking in my story, I talk a lot about the um, accountability that comes with coaching because I know that the people that I'm attracting or um, trying to attract to me um, are the people that need the accountability, the people that don't have a ton of extra time, um, the people who are looking for a little bit of extra income. Um, so it's a lot of me talking about the accountability that comes with coaching and less so the financial aspect of it. Um, there are so many aspects of coaching um, that can apply to your life and your journey. And I think it's important to speak about the things about it that are most important to you. And for me, that's the accountability. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I still remember your pajama post. <laughs> so I have a question. How did you create your planner thing that you do your food and is that just a random planner that you got or is it something you created? Oh, we can't. Oh, there it goes. I think you posted it in the team page a long time ago, didn't you? Yeah, this is from like July. So I think I'm a firm believer that your tracking um, will evolve as you evolve. Mm -hmm. And so mine has evolved from this completely. Um, I ended up printing the um, Beachbody success tracker and I do follow that now. But I think in the beginning, it was too overwhelming for me. Um, and I needed to focus more on inviting at that stage in my coaching journey and creating connections and so those were the things that I focused mostly on as well as at this stage I was um, in a diamond dash group so I added that to my tracker because that was something that was important to me at that time um, and I can post this again as well but it it is literally just a notebook <laughs> that has um, I put at the top, it's kind of like a, a, cause I follow to be mindset. So I kind of copied a few things from there. So this is like my personal journey stuff up top. Um, the date, my workout, my weight, my total loss, um, my times for food and what I ate. And then at the bottom, well, I stuck my water down there too, but at the bottom you can kind of see um, the tasks for that day and I put just made little check boxes next to it um, so on there I have like diamond dash check-in a quality post of the day keeping my story live was really hard for me in the beginning <laughs> um, it still is hard for me during the week because I um, work so that part is hard for me but um, having it on my tracker is that's not something that's on the beach body tracker and it was something that I needed to focus on on that at that point in my journey um, and putting it on there helped because I like to check off to-do lists. <laughs> yeah, so do I. But yes, Robin, I can post that again if you think it would be helpful for you. I love that idea, having everything in one place. So it's like, I don't know, I feel like it's so much easier to check off stuff for your personal journey than it is business. Right. And when you put it all together, it's like, all right, right. let's do this. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt. Yeah, I love that. And I find that my, like, my personal stuff and my personal tracking stuff anyways, I struggle now, even still, putting it on the back burner because my, I don't want to say my business is more important to me because it's all in the same yeah. uh, realm of importance, I guess. Um, but I feel like I have a, a good hold on my personal journey. Um, and so I end up putting that tracking on the back burner, which I do not recommend doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, Savannah, this might be a silly question, but I feel like I'm fairly new to like Instagram, <laughs> like just over the last couple of months have made an account. Where did you learn like all the ins and outs of it? I feel like that's what I like you're talking about reels and like changing it to a business account. I'm like completely lost when it comes to that. Like, how did you learn all of that? Um, you guys are frozen. Am I frozen? Yeah, you're frozen. <laughs> there you go. Um, now you're good. Okay. All right. Perfect. 
Um, so I think it's one of those things over time I have um, just like caught little snippets and being on the Slate Squad calls is yep. very important um, Monday nights at eight o'clock because that is kind of every, almost every call that I reference um, was a Slate Squad call. Um, and I think Kelly was the one who told me about um, changing it to a business page. And it's just one of those things, it's like anything else, you know, you just you learn as you go. Um, yeah. But a lot of it also is the 15 minutes that I spend on social media interacting with others. I also go through reels very frequently um, to get ideas and save audio. Um, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos on how to do reels and how to learn Instagram. <laughs> sounds silly but um youtube is really a great um reference for me for learning about social media yeah going out and searching for whatever it is we need to learn i took a course on reels i posted a whole google document in our team page last week if you missed it if you want to have tips on how to make reels what's most effective that kind of thing Hey, yeah. Savannah, when you're researching your hashtags, like what exactly are you like looking for in that, I guess? So I, in terms of hashtags, I recently realized that I should not be using hashtags that have like 37,000 other posts on them. So like when you add a hashtag, you can see um, it'll give you suggestions and it shows you how many posts um, are attached to that hashtag. Um, and I have recently tried to focus, um, I don't even know how to say it, niching, niching, mm -hmm. um, and trying to, yes, I am looking, my market is busy moms, busy full time working moms. Um, but trying to niche a little bit further down because those are the hashtags that have less posts and the people who are searching those hashtags are going to be more focused on looking for solutions for that specific thing. So for example, um, I have a syndrome called PCOS. It's polycystic ovarian syndrome um, and it can make it really difficult to lose weight. Um, so I have recently started adding hashtags about weight loss, um, weight loss transformations um, to a lot of my posts to try and help other women who also struggle with losing weight due to PCOS and sometimes the symptoms that come along with PCOS. Um, and Thing. I'm trying to think of another example. Okay, that's like because when you said like researching, that's like what I was thinking. Um, it's like that niche thing. Yeah. Um, because I know if you guys don't follow, it's um Shailene Johnson's son Brock. He yeah. does like a lot of posts into like the algorithms of Instagram and stuff like that, and he's like made a lot of mentions of like finding your niche with your hashtag. So I didn't know if you had like anything else you were looking for when you were doing that. So when I, when I look at a hashtag, I basically just want to make sure that I'm using hashtags that are what I'm envisioning it being for. Like, mm -hmm. I also, uh, Brittany, somebody mentioned Brittany Batla um, is good to follow on Instagram. She's a wealth of knowledge. Um, and she mentioned once in her story that if you, there are a lot of um, hashtags that are blocked by Instagram. Um, and if you add a blocked hashtag to your post, nobody will be able to see it regardless of what other hashtags you use. So she used an example of like hashtag beauty blogger. Um, and then I made a reel the other day about um, Easton being a psycho child, um, second born child. <laughs> and I almost hashtagged second child problems. And for some reason, that showed up as blocked hashtag. Um, so. Oh, that's good to see. I never knew that. That's good to know. Thanks. 
if you hashtag uh, search hashtag, I don't know if it still is, um, search hashtag beauty blogger and there's a notice at the top that says you may not be able to see all of these posts in this hashtag. Okay, cool, thank y'all. Yeah. Does anybody else have questions? I have a quick question. So I remember um, like a while ago, I created a couple of different lists of hashtags that I saved in my notes and then I, I just used. Um, do you do that or do you try to mix it up? No, so um, another thing that Brittany Bala says is that um, Insta Instagram algorithms do not like it when you reuse the same hashtags over and over again. Um, or the same series of hashtags. So I try to use the same um, types of hashtags without using the same exact series of hashtags every time, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I mean, I, and that Kelly or Dana or somebody may, that may have been put out there, but I, I still focus most of my mind on Facebook. So I'm far behind on Instagram, but yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Sounds like we need to have a call just all about Instagram, <laughs> all things Instagram. Oh, I love it. I've learned so much about Instagram in the last couple of months. Lots yeah. Of, there's so much to learn. Yes. So don't feel overwhelmed because there's a lot to it. Yeah. I feel like there's so much more to do on Instagram than Facebook. Facebook is like posts, stories, messages. Instagram is yeah, a whole but it's other. More, it's also more personal. So yeah. like I've had a couple of people add me um, on Instagram or follow me on Instagram. And then I ended up adding them on Facebook after having a couple of conversations with them just because I feel like it's more personal and they get to know me a little bit better. Um, and that's fine with me. Like the, the initial connection can happen on Instagram, but um, I want them to know me at a more personal level, so. Yeah. I, I have another question. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so do you, when you, I, I, I Obviously, each individual conversation in person is, you know, like unique and you kind of get to feel, you know, when is a good time to throw out the invite. But are you kind of of the mind that, you know, throwing out the invite, the sooner the better? Or do you keep the conversation going? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, definitely, like you said, depends on the person and the conversation. Like if the conversation started with them reaching out to me about something related to my fitness or wellness journey, um, then it's going to take less time for me to throw out the invite. Um, but I find that when the conversation starts for example, with the girl that I reached out to about Country Park Deli, <laughs> um, I, that was months ago, and I still haven't invited her. It's just been like casual conversation ever since, um, and I, I know that she knows what I do. It's very obvious on my on my social media, um, and so I think personally, I'm definitely still learning that where to place that invite in those. Uh, cold market conversations um, but I will like sprinkle things about like uh, what you do for work what you um, to try and bring it back to what I do for work so that I can bring it up um, and then it becomes easier to place that invite if that Absolutely. I think especially with like Team Cup Month going on, you know, and we're like all pushing for like invites and things that, um, I don't know, it's just important to to talk about and thanks for sharing. Yeah, of course. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? You are a wealth of knowledge, Savannah. <laughs> Yes, I love Thank this. You. Who likes calls like this? Like speakers, coach speakers, like tips. Awesome. We'll have to do more of these. Thank you, Savannah, for sharing all your success tips. It was Sorry, awesome to see everybody. Out. We're going to take a boomerang before I forget. I've been slacking recently. Everybody dance, jump. <laughs> 
Yes, you did fantastic, Savannah. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Bye, ladies.